Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Barry Chappell coming to you live from Primetime Shopping Network. I got a show tonight. Oh, it's a big show. And we've been practicing in the studio to see who can do the best Dr. Evil. Ashley, can you do the best? Can she do a good Dr. Evil? You know Dr. Evil? <laughs> good. All right, let's see your... Oh, she left. I was... Because right on the easel, Wilson, is a rare, 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 rare Oleg Javet. And the last Oleg I have, this... All right, Pat, uh, Ashley, do your Dr. Evil. All right, don't smile. Kick her in the shin. Let's see. Let's see your eyebrow. All right, come up here. Do your Dr. Evil. I don't even do it on air. Yes, you can do it on air. Because I'm going to be like Dr. Evil when it comes to this painting. All right, be Dr. Evil. Don't zoom in, Wilson, or I'll kick you in the shin. I will. All right, you're going to be Dr. Evil. No, I, no, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. I look like the fingers go down. Oh, no. All right, do your Dr. Evil. I want a million billion dollars. Do it one time. Dr. Evil. I'll show you and then I'll turn. Okay. All right, do it. No, you're not on camera, so do it. Do it. Like <laughs> 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 Matt, <laughs> call casting. <laughs> no, I. The reason I want to do Doctor Evil is because this Oleg is so valuable. This is BC two o six seven. Um, it is looking into space, and I'm going to let Wilson go through this piece. This is a master graduate. Yeah, that's pretty good right there. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Take a picture of yourself doing that. This is Oleg Javetin, master graduate of the Surikov. The hardest art college in Europe, Russia. Uh, to date, no American has ever graduated from the Surikov. He has a master's degree from the Surikov, named after fame uh, painter Sergei Ivanov Sur uh, uh, Surikov. And what uh, this, we're joking around about Dr. Evil. Because people were asking, what do I want for this? And I tried to make the Dr. Evil face. And I want a million dollars. A billion million, yeah. Uh, this is the last Oleg I got. He is one of the greatest uh, artists ever. Uh, two of his paintings are held at the Surikov. And that is amazing. I have that. And I have this box right here. Ashley, you know what's in this box? What's in the box? You gotta come take a look. What's in this box? You gotta. You really wanna see what's in this box? I do. I do. All right, stick your hand in this box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is the last 875. 2016 Canadian 9999 fine silver maple leaves. I watched Mike Mahoney give about a 45 minute presentation at goldsilver.com today about why he believes using every metric, and he used everyone. 
He used the CPI, which he calls the CPY. He used, look at that right there, 49 fine silver, Wilson, with a special privy mark. The little maple leaf, yeah, look at that. Using every metric, M2 money, M3, M1, which they pretty much discontinued using uh, shadowstats.com inflation, why he is certain that silver will be at least $100 an ounce. And many of his metrics showed it to be 1100 500 I mean, he used every single metric known. And I'm not claiming that. He claimed that silver is going to be $100 an ounce and I, I think he's low, but this is the 2016, oh, my nicotine gum? Now I'm going to become Dr. Evil. <laughs> yeah. And it has the queen on the reverse. And I'll tell you what, Ashley, if we gently do this, I even used a picture of my dog, Ginger, guarding. Uh, you think you can make him stack without falling? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she says. All right. Stack them. Oops. I just backed into my Oleg and I backed into you. There we go. I also have some two Marcel Mooleys. I brought the only signed Mooley book I have on this planet. I might sell that tonight. Mooley died in 2008 or 2008, I believe. Look at that. And you're not using the glove. Well, I have invisible gloves. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Just having fun with you. Everybody gets mad at me when I handle coins without a glove. Yeah. Well, now they'll be mad at me. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Because, folks, I think we are. Should I put the maple leaf in the middle? I'd put another one there. Uh, just be very delicate. It's a baby little butterfly. Hey, that looks good. That looks good. So now here's. Oh, there we go. Oh, and uh, I have some circulated Morgans I'm going to get to. Yeah, put one of those there. Yeah. So we sold, last time I sold out of the whole box, offering deals on a Canadian tube of 25. Yes, yes. Uh, camera two. Everybody loves this. I, uh, and that is a Zex. I'm just going to move the reflection right here, Wilson. My Batman, Superman, and the Flash... You were getting some. Nice work, Gary. No, now it's worse. Oh, wait, is it worse? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a Peter Max that's got it now. So, folks, uh, a lot of silver collectors and precious metals collectors like myself, I personally, it's my belief, not prime time or anybody else, I think whoever has. Whoever makes hand baskets right now, you're going to be making a lot of money because the economy is going to hell in a hand basket. I'm sorry. I believe that. I have a four-year degree in economics. I got a master's degree in economics. Got nine or 12 doctoral hours. It took me 12 extra hours to figure out I don't want a doctorate in economics. And I do not want to do linear calculus to, kick, to uh, shape the slope of a demand or supply curve. I think the economy is getting going to get tough. And I think precious metals are going to make a moonshot. I think you're going to see stuff you will not believe. Right now it's not mentioned on TV. It's not mentioned on the news. It's not in the business papers. In a year or two, that's all you'll hear about is how much they have moved up because they have printed so many trillions that it's, it's uncomprehendable. 
And, you know, a lot of times, and a lot of student debt got forgiven. I, I don't disapprove or approve of that. I just got to say that's pure inflation when you do stuff like that. This is how you protect yourself. Now, folks, I am going to give you guys deals. And just so you know, there is a shortage of silver blanks to make new ones. I mean, this is going to get really interesting. This is a 2016 9999 fine Canadian maple leaf. And I'll tell you what, Ashley, I don't know if you saw silver. It went up today, even though the dollar broke over 110, uh, which should have pushed silver way down, silver went up. I think 42 cents today, an ounce. I mean, it went up and gold went up. I mean, this is when the dollar is hitting record highs. That should have made silver and gold hit the floor and it didn't which is a very promising sign. And I, I'll tell you what, I, I, here's the price on these. And if you're out there, I, I hope you buy some because I think you're going to need it. I, I know people will. I lived through the inflation uh, of the 1970s, early 80s. It was something to see. People were going through their change. All right, let me get my calculator here. All right, here's what I am going to do. Times. Oh, this is, I, what did we have this at last time? Oh my goodness, you think I should leave it that? even though it's going up, up, up. Ah. And maybe that's the price if they buy a roll, Ashley. What are you thinking? What would you price these at, patty cakes? You know, if they take multiple berry, we'll give them a heck of a deal. So if you buy like a roll, we'll give them? Yeah. All right, folks. If you want one, one coin, $28.95. You want two through 10, 28 even. You want to buy a tube, call us up. A tube has 25 in it. Folks, all hell's breaking loose, I, in my humble opinion. And I have never seen anything like this. I think people on CNBC and these networks, a lot of them can have a lot of backtrack. And what uh, the interest rates are going up, dollars going up. That is such a cute dog. I know. Do not show that. Uh, what's his name? You know, mm. Moshe. He eats dogs. No, he doesn't. I'm making that up. All right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go to the best price right now. $27.95. That is $9,999 fine. Canadian silver. This is 2016. You go online, they want a lot, lot, lot more. Give me a call. Now, I want to show you something else. Look at my Oleg. But I got, I got, I got, oh, I'll tell you what I'm going to sell right now. Ashley, yeah. can you hand me my Krasniansky? It's right there. That's Anatole Krasniansky. He's like 90 something. Do you want Let me see. Let's see that one you got right there. Part that one on the easel. Yeah. And I am going to guard my Oleg. When you touch the Oleg, yeah. 
Uh, be very gentle. Yes, sir. Because I want, you got to be able to do it now. 2197, you made me just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there she goes. <laughs> get, get that picture. All right, Wilson, watch this. Watch All right, this. yeah. Watch this, Wilson, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Dr. Evil. Yeah. Yeah, that's Dr. Evil. <laughs> this is Anatole Krasniansky. When you look at this piece, you will see it's signed A. Krasniansky. It is uh, of an edition of 95 or. Uh, it's like an artist proof for an HC. Anatole Krasniansky is one of the most famous Russian artists of all time. He had to escape Russia the old fashioned way, uh, get somehow, get to Berlin, jump over the fence. Anatole Krasniansky painted for so many companies. Here is the cheapest on a limited edition print. I used to sell his originals. They are unobtainable now. Like here is a silk screen. Well hey here's the one I have right here. Now it's similar to this one. Look at this limited edition print. $2,500. Anatole Krasniansky used to paint his originals and they look like pastels. He is one of the most talented Russian artists. Signed A. Krasny Anatole Krasniansky. And there is the number on the other side. You're going to have to come in close on that. Cheapest price I got I could find at Compound was twenty five hundred, and I believe there are a lot more. Yeah, retail is probably forty five hundred, and uh, at least forty five hundred. Tell you what, start at zero. All right, I just want to put my toe in the water. Ginger like the beach. I'm going to put my toe in the water on this. Start at zero. Oh, that came out great. Start at zero. $50 increments. I don't know what he's doing. Schofield used to paint with him when they were at, uh, I don't know if it was Hubs Historical or one of the early galleries. He knew Anatole. Anatole's still alive. He's in his 90s. Started zero, $50 increments on a signed and numbered serograph. I think it's an HC for the edition. Look at that. Look at the mask. Yeah, I got Morgan dollars, silver dollars. I got $20 St. Gaudens. I got Marcel Mooley, Michael Schofields. I got a Zach's original. No open. Now this is an opportunity. We are just on live streaming right now. Is that correct? You know they made a mistake last week. We were on direct TV a little bit at the beginning. You could feel it, huh? In your bones. <laughs> Dr. Evil. No open once. Forget the fact. 
What happened? I was testing the phone. Oh, you were testing the phone. So I have no bid on a one of the greatest of great masters, Anatole Krasniansky. Let's see how smart my phone is. It's smarter than me. How old is artist Anatole Krasniansky? The Park West Gallery Cruise Art Auction. I spent... Oh, here's somebody talking about Park West. We have fifty dollars. Hey, can you Google search how old Anatole Krasniansky is? I wish they would spell phonetically because you'd have Kras, K R Z, Kras, K R A, N E E, K N E E, N. He's 80, what, 90, 92. I am resting at $50 on a Park West Krasniansky. And I can read Krasniansky Park West pricing. Oh, it's called Till and Silver, Teal and Silver by Anatole Krasniansky. Boy, they got in trouble if they didn't open this for sixteen hundred and one hundred dollars. They got in trouble at Park West if the auctioneer didn't get at least sixteen and we're at one fifty. We're at one fifty. Whatever you guys, I am too busy trying to spell Krasniansky backwards. One hundred and fifty, going once. One hundred and fifty on a forty-five hundred dollar Krasniansky going twice. All in, all said. Are you verifying, Ashley? I gotta move. Gotta move. Gotta move. Sold. That was sold. Shipping's twelve thousand. <laughs> no, uh, we'll be fair. Whatever. Yeah. Ask. All right. Seeing how that was such a stunning success, seeing how an auctioneer who doing something like that, like me, should have been fired. I have one other Krasniansky here. This is the last Krasniansky. I used to sell his originals at DSN. Oh, they would they would go for eight, six, seven, eight thousand. This is called purple and gold. The other one was teal and gold. This is Krasniansky, purple and gold. Uh, minimum accepted Park West price, as I read it, sixteen hundred and seventy-five dollars. But that's could be an old sticker. I might not be translating the code right. Pro two nine one ten. Maybe they wanted twenty nine hundred and ten. I don't know. I don't speak Park West. I don't even speak dog anymore very well. I don't even speak English very well. But I did get my R's okay. All right. This is the last Kras I have on this planet. This is it. This is the last one. Start at zero, $50 increments. I will never get another Krasniansky. What's that? Uh, item number is 
What is the item number on this, Ashley? Oh, there it is. BC2196. And it toll signed it right there. Hey, here's one similar. Look at this. On eBay, US3200. 3200. And this is the last Krasniansky I got. Started zero, $50 increments. Oh, here's one for even more. Boy, Barry, you should fire yourself. Uh, I'm going to start one more at $50 increments. Now, all right, it all started when I was a small boy, Wilson, yes. Who was that one senator that had to resign? I think I can, I think I can. I know people like me. He was a comedian. Who am I thinking about? Al Franken, yeah. Very people like you. <laughs> All right. Now, get me on camera with this painting, Wilson. I am at a whopping zero. Yet. Nine, nothing, zero, zilch. Granted, I am not on DirecTV or DISH yet. I get DISH at 7 o'clock. But just on my streaming, we should call it screaming internet, I am at zero. Now, as Economic indicators go, that's not a good sign, Wilson. But I'm not going to end the auction. I'm going to leave it here at zero. On an Anatole Krasniansky, $3,200 on eBay, zero going once. Oh, I have some beautiful David Lloyd Glovers. I got Spider Man. I got jang, I got a lot of cool stuff. Zero going twice. Fair and final warning at zero. What happens if zero wins? <laughs> All right, we are going to take this. We have $50. Yeah, well, whatever, Patty. I am testing. I am, I am kicking the tires of internet only. I'm learning from it. Yeah. And tell the caller there is no way in heck, in a biblical place, I can buy this for zero. I had to pay a lot, a lot of times the bid right now. We are at 50, and I'm going to give it a slow count. Uh, now, $50 going once. I got 100 Folks, what's going on here? This is a $3,200 Krasniansky. We are at a hundred, looking for a hundred and fifty. Oh, this is an Anatole Krasniansky. He's ninety-two years old. He escaped Russia the old-fashioned way. Jumped over the barbed wire. One fifty has been bid. One.
we are at $150 on Anatole Krasniansky, 92 years young. This is the, yes, this is the last one. I do not have another Krasniansky. I am not going to buy another Krasniansky. We're at 150 going once. Two hundred has been bid. Thank you anyway. We are at two hundred, looking for two fifty on a thirty-two hundred dollar Anatole Krasniansky. Two hundred going once, two hundred going twice. Fair final warning sold to Dr. Evil's customer. You got it, Dr. Evil. But you got to give us that Dr. Evil laugh. <laughs> this is sold. You got to give us the Dr. Evil laugh since you sold it. Yeah. I can't. I can't have it. Yes, you can. You can do it. Doesn't he laugh like, Whoa. Yeah, you did it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. 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 All right. I got Morgan dollars. I got a Jang. Oh. Hey, uh, and you printed that, Ashley. You're printing it? The printing that Jang ad. Did you already give that to me? Yeah, I grabbed the sculpture. I want to show you something here. Uh, yeah. And what did I do with that thing we just printed? There's Peter Max. There's Jang. It must be. Oh, right here. No. Anatole Krasniansky goes back. Peter Max. Michael Schofield. You found it? Yeah. I want to show you something we just printed today on this. Make sure I didn't put it in the. I put it in the Krasniansky folder. <laughs> That's what I just said. Yeah. It's gonna stay. Gonna stay. Well, you gotta. You, you see, that's the problem, Ashley. You gotta ask the elephant nicely. Excuse me. Would you please stay? Well, there's two of them. Can you all stay? All three of you. There's only two. What about the baby? All right. There's three. <laughs> elephant family now. This is a top rated seller on eBay. Now, US, look at this right here $5,999 for Elephant Family. Or if you're in Australia, 8,889 Australian dollars and 38 Australian cents. And if you want to buy it on a payment plan in the United States, you can pay, let me just read it right here. You can pay I think it was something like $259 for 24 months or something like that, or 48 months. Look at this. So a top-rated seller wants a dollar shy of 6000 This is a current ad. 
that I did not print or know that person at all. Now, Alan Fingerhut, I wish I had listened to him. He just died last year. He's the guy that made Fingerhut a billion dollar business. Alan Fingerhut is the man that brought Jang from China, the Yunnan region, over the United States. That is Alan Fingerhut's face examining one of the bronzes. I wish I had listened to him and Marty Weiss who kept telling me, well, you, you idiot, stop talking about Morgan Dollars, start buying pandas. He was right. This, is this 1966? This is a very rare bronze. They want a dollar shy of 6000 on eBay. And they had some 48 month payment plan. Here's what I'm going to do. And this is stunning. Oh, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, this is going to go bye-bye. I love this piece, too. Oh. Thirty five hundred to open. Make it thirty two hundred to open. Two hundred dollar increments. This is number one eighteen of only two hundred and twenty five made. This weighs a ton. If they were still making Perry Mason, which they can't because Raymond Burr is dead. Is Barbara Hale dead? I don't know. You don't watch it. You're not a Perry Mason fan. Uh, you could have this Jang bronze laying next to a dead man. Make it look like it fell from the second story of Ashley's Ski Lodge. Killing her husband. You killed him with a Jang bronze. And everybody thought you did it, but you had to get Perry Mason on the case. And his investigator, Paul Drake. Yes. Get me close to 3200 and I'll get this to you. I believe it is one of the most valuable. I would be amazed if there are 20 in the United States. Almost every one of these ended up back in China. In Chinese colleges now, in the Central Academy of Art in Beijing, 70% of artists use the Yunnan style to honor Jang T. Fang. I am fortunate. I know Jang. Good guy. So, no open on this yet. Keep that. I got Spider-Man, I got a Peter Max, I got a Michael Schofield. 
Hmm. Got a couple David Lloyd Glovers. Arroyo over there. All right. Yeah, I'm going to auction my Royo. Ah. Oh, no. I got my fingerprints on Ashley's weapon to kill her husband to become a star on Perry Mason, even though everybody in the series might be deceased. This is rather heavy. Yeah, but listen, I think you did it because you're jealous. <laughs> jealous, yeah. I... <laughs> oh. <laughs> In the words of whatever. <laughs> this is Rosa. Uh, El Rosa Cala. Did I say that right, Patty? I just want to show you the last price sheet on Royo and what they go for. Jose Royo is a Spanish master painter. And I just want to show you because I have some comps on this. I got this one. It's coming up. So maybe it's the last one in the folder. Take a look at that. That is a silk screen done on museum board. I just want to show you what some of the pieces done on museum board. And I'll bet you don't think I can get this right in Spanish, do you? Like this one right here. Bajando Hasi El Mar, Down by the Sea, by Royo. They want $7,500, and I printed that in 2011. Here is. Dos Figueros. <laughs> right there. Panel edition, 4500. La Mandolina. Right there. Forty five hundred panel edition printed in two thousand and five. Now, Ashley, if you oh, it's, I'm getting close. Oh, uh, it right here. If you, you go through here, Prima Lucci, that is the greatest piece of art here. I'm just going to take Prima Lucci. You look through the rest and find El Rosa. This is a modern masterpiece. 
I had number one of the edition and I sold it. I think I even sold it on prime time. Uh, that, that is one of the greatest works of art. Did you find it? If I'm not mistaken, I had a comp for 6,500 on Elkella Rosa. It is fantastic. And it is one of the few Royos I have. What I am going to do is I am going to auction this. As we look for my comp sheet, you found it? Yes. Yeah. No, that's not the right one. going to do start uh I'm going to give someone a deal of a lifetime $900 to open $100 increments once we get the open what is she saying Wilson look at her eyes Look at that body gesture. You're married, right, Wilson? Not anymore. She got mad at your other side jobs in your high heel shoes. When you were married, could she pose like this, your wife? She could. What does it say? Uh, what? It, let me see what it says. Uh, retail. Yeah, that was a reduced damaged 1100. This is perfect condition. I'm opening it, Ashley, at 900. This is Jose Royo. You can see museum edition. And, oh, look at that, number 124 of 150 on museum board. Oh, that would have been a deal. That's a cute dog. Now, how do you know? Just a I'm just asking out of curiosity, Juliet. How do you know when the dog has to go to the bathroom? He does he tell you? She? So like if she has to go, she's gonna want to jump on Ashley's lap. <laughs> I don't know if that was an awe. Uh, oh, I have some amazing coins tonight. I have some amazing everything. I right, no open. At $900, I'll tell you what. Um, uh, Ashley, what is your favorite David Lloyd Glover over there? Can't be the first one. Hi folks, Barry Chapel coming to you live from Hollywood, California. We get a lot of our affiliates in 11 minutes and you guys have gotten some amazing deals. I'll tell you what I will. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Right? Yeah. All right. This is your favorite, Ashley's favorite. All right. 
Deerfield River. Autumn in Vermont. 18 by 24 BC two BC 1897. Just so you know, David Lloyd Glover was one of Art Brilliant's leading artist. Many of his paintings would sell for hundred, hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars in Japan. David Lloyd Glover, right here. There is a picture of him painting. He is an impressionistic style. And let me just see if any of these. Yeah, I wonder if this is in the book. He would have told me if this was in the book. Like autumn covered bridge right there. He said, and it was very important that in Japan, fine art is considered dowry worthy. So when you give a dowry, you can include fine art in his. He was one of the top sellers for our brilliance, he sells. He just got a huge commission by the car museum. Where does he have to fly? He was telling us last week. He's got to fly somewhere to paint that most expensive Mercedes. Yeah. All right, I'll tell you what. Here's what I'm going to do on this. This is Ashley's favorite, too. I'm going to do. I, I'm going to give someone a great opportunity before Dish joins me. They change up Korean TV. Now they're drinking a bowl of soup. <laughs> yes. One was using a spoon, the other is just slurping it. Is it polite to slurp your soup in Korea? They may say no. It is? I did not know that. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. This is a 4,000, 5,000, 7,000 David Lloyd Glover. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. 1,200 to open which is below, 1200 to open, $100 increments. This is Ashley's favorite David Lloyd Glover. And he can paint with a palette knife. He paints with a brush. He is a usually what is known as a plein air artist where he sets his easel up in Vermont to paint this picture. And I hope everybody's out there. No one brought, bought the Jang, huh? Not yet. Oh, I got some gold coins here tonight. And got some. Tell you what I'm going to do. Ashley, just on this one, not this painting, can you put that Michael Schofield on the easel? Because I have a secret low price on the Michael Schofield. I'm not going to reveal it, reveal it on the air. That one right there. Yes. The little switcheroo. 
two, two, one, two, and do we have, you, you getting any glare there, Wilson? No, not in the other corner. Little bit, there you go. Yes. Pan this, this is a Michael Schofield original, painted in 2022. He is in the Arm & Hammer Billion Dollar Collection. He has sold originals from Hubs Historical for 48,000. He just did a commission, three pieces for 180,000. I have a top secret, uh, retail 25,000. All right, Matt, retail's 25,000. I have a double, not top secret price. You gotta call the operators for the double, double secret top secret price will not be given on the air you got to call the operator so if you can put by the price call operator for top secret price yes you gotta go to the bathroom now huh just hand her to ashley <laughs> joking i'm joking that is mean i am a mean person ashley I'm just going to eat one of these. I'm starved. <laughs> yeah, call the operators for the top secret off their price right now. So, yeah. Matt, if you can just make it say call for top secret price. Matt, in your life, have you ever taken a journey on acid? I haven't. You have? Do you regret it? Uh, one of them. One of them. You took many. A few. Because the price I have is mind-blowing, Matt. It is such a mind-blowing price. Oh, I got a price. Who are you talking to? Because I got a price. Are you ready for this? Register them. oil on canvas yes it's a mind numbing price how would you describe your trips on acid Wilson what did it do to you you hallucinated now yeah. That doesn't sound fun. Hey, are we now on dish? You see, opium doesn't make you hallucinate. It just makes you feel good. And mine was prescription. Got it at a hospital. Banana flavored opium. Granted, it was 1978, 77 actually, 76, 77. We're on dish. 
Hello, Dish Shopping Network. Am I on camera too? Yes. Hello, I got a heck of a show. I have coins. I have art. I was starting with a Michael Schofield and I had a secret, double secret price if he'd called the operators. I have some amazing coins tonight. I have a Jang T Fang, but look at this, folks. This. Oh, I brought it here. Yes, I'm going to sell this, but can you bring my Oleg Javetin gently? This is the only Oleg I have on this planet. This is must buy if you can. On live streaming, the first hour we were trying to do, Ashley does it better than me, Dr. Evil. Are you ready, Ashley? Can you do it again? Let's see, you put your... <laughs> no. How does he do it? How does Dr. Evil do it? One million dollars. <laughs> yeah, Ashley can do it better than me. This is the only Oleg I have on this planet, BC 2067. Uh, it is unbelievable. Two Olegs hang in the Surikov in Moscow. And when I talked to Oleg about this painting, he says, the reason I love this painting is this lips doesn't have any lipstick. That has just a touch. He said, the outer lipstick makes this painting. He said, it is so subtle that a lot of people won't catch it, but it actually makes the painting really three-dimensional. And I am going to put it like this so you can see it. There are cubes, squares, circles, triangles, master graduate. I have this tonight. But what I want to do, um, I also have right here, and I debated about the price. Take a look at this right there. The last 875, 2016. 9.9999 fine, 49 fine Canadian silver maples with the special maple leaf privy mark on it. I know you saw these last week. I went home. Oh, look at this coin. So gentle. Look at that, Wilson. I don't know if you've looked at the price of silver. It went up today. Even though the dollar index went shooting up. When the dollar index goes up, precious metals prices usually fall. Not today. Even though the dollar index broke 110, silver prices went up. Look at that. This is one of the coolest coins. I am going to just leave it right there. State coin. Now I know you saw this last week. I got to tell you, I watched Mike Mahoney make a 45 minute presentation on why using any metric known to economists, whether we're going with M1 money, M2, M3. The, well, actually, M1 is gone in 2020. They have all these new metrics. Why, Mike? 
Mahoney believes silver will be easily be at least $100 an ounce. He gave every metric. Some of them came out to be $300. One came out to be $1,100. The most bizarre one came out to be $509 an ounce, which I am not saying. I am Barry Chapel. I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in economics. I believe the silver gold ratio is so overvalued. In other words, silver is so undervalued compared to gold. It's like 95 to 1 today, where you could buy 95 ounces of silver for one ounce of gold. Makes no silver is dirt cheap. And here's what I'm going to do. I hope you're out there because I brought my last 875 coins. We sold out last week. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to honor that price. Even though silver went up 40 cents today. Do you know that, Patty? It went up 40 cents today. And I, what, what did I have the price at? I can't believe I'm an idiot. I can't believe it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they come in, Canadians come in tubes of 25. I put these up at $27.95 each. If you want a discount on quantity, give me a call. If you want to roll a Canadian roll of 25, look at those coins. We are living in the strangest times I have ever seen. I truly cannot believe some of the deals that are going are being made right now. I call me naive, call me stupid. I've been called worse. I believe someday, maybe in the next seven, eight years, the Dow 30, you can buy it with one ounce of gold. That's what I believe. I might be an idiot. But at $27.95 for Canadian silver, four nine fine with the privy, I brought my last 875 coins. I have the most amazing Zacks. Ashley, I have the Flash, Superman, and Batman in an original. Look at that. Now, if you want to look at the Flash, Ashley, you got to look at him real fast because he goes like that. Do you see the Flash? Do you see him? Gone. No, there he is. I'm joking. Sheldon, Leonard, and Wallowitz always get in a fight who gets to be the Flash. This is a Zach's original. 2237. This is a mixed media original. It's an original collage done by Zach's. He keeps setting record after record. I saw where one of his Zach's went. I, I have a, I had a, hang on, I might have it right here. Yes, Chapel, you might. Right, there's the Peter Max. There's the Anatole Krasniansky. There's the Royal. There's the David Glover. Oh. Here was Art World News when they did a story on Zach's. Right here in Art World News. Here is some of the prices on a Zach's $100 bill. $3,950. E.M. Zacks. 
Three dimensional, Marilyn, $5,600. That trooper from Star Wars, $7,495. Free delivery. I got some other prices here. But this one right here is as cool as it comes. I am told the retail on this is $12,500. Even Jackson Pollock's it with some paint. Do, 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 do. Never give up. You got Superman, Batman, and the Flash. And look at that. You got Robin in there. The Bat Boy. I got a great price for you. I want to show you one other one though. I got a Peter Max here, got Michael Schofield. Now I'll tell you what, I'm going to put this one. Because this one can get a little, you got to watch out for this one. You know who that is? That's Spider-Man. Take a look at Spider-Man right there. Look at that. Now if you see Spider-Man, have you ever seen him? <laughs> no, what? <laughs> Look at that. Zach's original. Look at his eyes. Look at the eyes of Spider-Man in this Zach's original. E.M. Zach's. I was told the retail on this piece, this collage, is $7,900. But what I am going to do, I'm going to put that one right here. Do we have any interest in Zach's? Or Oleg? I have some Michael Schofield. I have some David Lloyd Glover. You want to see a really rare coin right here, Wilson? While you're, oh, we got, I got a 1927 in Mint State 6.6 that should have graded MS 6.7. I'm so mad at them. But I got a lot of great stuff. You think we should auction this off as Zach's? What would you move to, Ashley? The bottom one. Yes, I need you to grab all the guys. Grab all the guys. <laughs> yeah. Spider Man, seventy nine hundred retail store price. E M Zacks, one of the most up and coming abstract artists there is. Start. Oh, what do you think? 4,000 to open, 4,500. Where would you start this? 4,500 to open. No. Here's what I'm going to do. Do not abuse me more than... Do not abuse me as much as Wilson's been abused. <laughs> start at zero. Start at zero, $250 increments. That is a $7,700 Zach's original collage. I'm starting at zero. No open on Spider-Man. Now, Wilson, if it goes like this. 
We have the open on the Spider-Man. 250 has been bid. Five hundred has been bid. Those are cool eyes. Those aren't Betty Davis eyes. We're at five hundred. This is a seven thousand eight hundred dollar Zach's original. Seven fifty has been bid. We're at seven fifty looking for a thousand. This is a seventy seven hundred dollar original. For who? Melvin, I'll work you a deal. Give me a second, Melvin. Um all right, we are. Are we down to one bidder at seven fifty? Yeah, <coughs> Who's got the bid at seven fifty? We're down to one bidder at seven fifty. Hey, if it goes, it goes. Seven fifty going once. Seven fifty on Spider Man. Going twice. Fair and final warning, all in, all said, sold. That went too cheap, but you got a great deal. Tell you what, got a. What's that? All right, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna put this one up right here, right now. Oh. It's got the flash. I usually used to watch Batman and Superman. True story. When I was eight, my mom had a Batman come over to my birthday party. True story. Four of my friends and me tackled him and we pulled his, tried to pull his mask off. I don't think he was the real Batman. Just me. I'll tell you what. One of a kind. 12,500. I'll tell you what. I'm going to make this so easy. This is a monumental piece. I'm going to make this so cheap. $2,000 to open, $100 increments once we get the open. This is a $12,000 major work by Zach's. We have $2,000. $2,000 has been bid, looking for $2,100. Who do you like better? Not talking to you. You're not on acid right now, are you, Wilson? You kicked that habit. Was it harder to kick the acid or the heroin? Heroin, that, that, okay. No, I never had any of this stuff. The most I ever had was strawberry flavored opium, but I got that from a hospital when a hurricane was moving in. But look at that, you got the Flash, you got Bat Boy, you got Superman, you got Batman. 2,000 going once. 2,000 going twice. I would want to be Superman. 2,000 fair. Final warning. All in, all said, sold. That is gone. Yes. That is gone. Best price on the Oleg. I'll tell you what. Give me one second because I got a Peter Max here. A unique original. Best price on the Oleg. Ugh.
All right, this was on the Ecstasy Carnival. You didn't do any ecstasy, did you, Wilson? No, just acid and heroin. Okay. Yeah, this was on the Ecstasy Carnival Cruise 22105. It's Peter and Max. Ooh, they got the batch number and everything. This, just so you know what a Peter and Max like this uh, goes for. Give me one second. Got my Peter and Max folder right here. Michael Schofield, the Jang. Let's Chris. Hang on. Uh, Peter Max isn't doing so. I mean, he is. He's but there's a picture of him in a Baldwin piano he painted. That is his high limit room. Now a lot of people don't know that Lee Iacocca and Peter Max raised three hundred and thirty million dollars in the 1970s to reopen the Statue of Liberty. Peter Max could see the Statue of Liberty from his apartment and he was depressed that you couldn't go visit it. He and Lee and Iacocca raised enough money to reopen it. And uh, some of Peter Max's, like here, here's Angel with Heart, similar in the sense that it is a mixed media original. You know, 50, uh, 80,000, asking price 61.3. I'm not gonna be anywhere near that. I'm gonna give someone a great deal and tell Melvin I'm working on that right now. Um, on the Peter Max, what I can do on this. I'll give someone a deal. This is a unique mixed media original. Five thousand to open, two hundred dollar increments. Think about this. I'll tell you what I do have that is so cool. And like uh, okay. Tell you what, folks. Take a look at this coin right here. That is. Beautiful. That is 1927. Look at that. You can see every high point. You can see every finger holding the torch. You can see Lady Liberty's eyes. You can see her toes through the sandals. That's why it is graded Mint State 6-6. Right there, 1927. Look at the reverse. The waves of the sun coming up on the eagle. Designer was Augustus St. Gordon. He designed the 1907 high relief. Unfortunately, he didn't live long enough to see it. He was in production when he died. 
I only have one, two of the MS-66s. Folks, I think we live in a time right now where you need as much gold and silver as you can get your hands on. I don't, it's my opinion. I don't know if it's Jack Jackals, but I believe hell's coming to dinner. And uh, it's going to start showing up in all kinds of shortages. That's just my humble opinion. I got a very, oh, the, the item number on the 1927... In MS66, Ashley, do you know the item number? Because I also have, what is it? Beautiful. I have some Alphonse Mukas here tonight. Got a lot of cool stuff. I know that the you got it there. Yeah, I think. Oh, I'm seeing incredible prices paid in six six. The twenty seven is an elusive coin. It's not that rare. I mean, as far as high grade six sixes, but. I personally selected these two uh, at Long Beach two shows ago. I went through every dealer's box. I'll tell you what I can do. Uh, no. No, 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 nine, nine, yet, least. No, I'm just joking with you. Ashley, are you sure? I priced them that cheap. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Are you sure? Tell me that price again. Three thousand eight hundred and fifty on an MS six six handpicked by me, PCGS graded. I have two. Oh, I hope you're out there. I am going to move that coin away. Thirty-eight fifty. Now, if you want a nineteen twenty-seven in MS six four, I only have three of those. What I have these priced at the nineteen twenty. That's an ounce, just under an ounce of gold. No. Patty, you ought to grab a fire extinguisher. Have you ever heard that liar, liar, pants on fire? She's lying. She's lying. She said I had these MS64s handpicked by me up at $2,500. There's an ounce of gold in there. You know what gold's at today? I mean, it's, are you, you kidding me? Do you know how it is to get an MS64? And I, I hand picked these, yes, $2,500. I have two of them, three of them. And without a doubt, they are stunning. Look at that, Wilson. Look at that, every high point. Graded Mint State 6-4, which catalog, catalog, 
which becomes, excuse me, brilliant uncirculated. 2,500. Now, I got one last thing I'm going to show you in the coin world. I'm going to get back to some art. This, folks, if you are worried about inflation, if you are worried about a lot of things, this is a 1914D manufactured in Denver and a 1914S minted in San Francisco. Now, if you look at this is BC 2085 and 2086. Well, it's 2085, yes. Now, if you come in close on the D, you can see the little D right above the date, 1914D. I started with five sets of this. I told Jack to buy this and look at the 1914S, minted in San Francisco. The 14D only meant 253,000. Only 253,000. I don't know if I should talk about it, Ashley. It's like Wilson talking about his rash. I just don't know if I should talk about it. I heard some moron giving a talk on coins on a competing channel, and I'm joking about your rash, Wilson. I know the ointment did the trick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm joking with him. Wilson's a great sport. Um, I heard this moron comparing the 2021 Morgan dollar to an 1893S. The difference is in 1893, if you went to a bank, you could get one. In 2021, Go to the bank and try and get a 2021 Morgan dollar. They're not. They can tell you got to send away for them and this and that. Anyway, enough about those morons. These two are really rare coins. Here's what I'm going to do. I only have two sets. Camera two. Uh, if, if you are looking for two really rare coins, I started with five or six sets. I only have two sets left. I highly recommend this. I am going to give you a price nobody in the free or unfree world could come close to. You get both the 1914 San Francisco and the 1914D where there was only 257,000 minted. And to have a Denver struck coin with only 253,000 minted 108 years ago to survive in Emma, Mint State 6 too. This is an incredible price. And take a look at this set. And uh, Ashley, if I'm not mistaken, the price is $4,990. For both, not one coin, both coins. I highly recommend this. If you've never bought a coin from me, I have been on TV for 32 years now. Uh, and this is one of the best deals I could ever give anyone. Jack and I are working so close on this. That set can protect you. I, like I said, I think it's going to get bad. This is exactly what I would recommend somebody, if you're new to coins, to get. The 14S and the 14D, 253,000, if I'm not mistaken, of the 14D is all they minted 108 years ago. At 4,990, you cannot go wrong. If you have two grandkids, buy them each a set. In my humble opinion, you put these away. You see what they looks like in 10 years, you're not going to believe it. The, these coins are so rare 
And to get this coin, both coins, not each, not 4,990 each, it's both coins for $4,990. Men stage six to Melvin, all right, best price. You made my coin fall. I'll tell you what I can do. Best price for Melvin on the Oleg. I mean, and I did did Oleg, did, did did Melvin see you pretending to be Dr. Evil? <laughs> Laughing? Because I want like a billion million for it, I'll tell you what. Uh, and that's a rare Oleg. It really is. I cannot get any more. Uh, tell you what, um, put the Oleg back up while we, oh, or we got a couple people. So you want me to put it up or not put it up? Okay. Uh, Everybody wants the Oleg, as they should. Master graduate of the Surikov. I've never been to Moscow. I've been to St. Petersburg. Folks, I don't know if you know how rare Oleg Javetin is. Master graduate of the Surikov. He is by far one of the greatest artists I've ever met. Yeah, let me put this up right now. Oleg Javetin. It's called Looking Into Space. And I'm going to hand you this one. Oh, there you go. The wire gets you. Oleg said to me, the, what makes this painting, you forget the fact you can see triangles, squares, circles, arches, the two faces. It, it takes him forever to, to lay the putty to do the coloring there. He said, just this little lipstick on the second face of the green-eyed girl, right there, gives that such pop. He said, that's something I would have learned at the Surikov. Master graduate, to date no American has ever graduated from the Surikov. Twelve have tried, no one has graduated. He's got a master's, master graduate of the Surikov. What does Melvin think about that price I quoted him? I gave him a great price. This is a painting Oleg didn't even want to sell me. This is the only Oleg I have. I brought this from my house. No more Oleg. I do not have another Oleg anywhere on this planet. And did Melvin see you do Dr. Evil? Oleg Javetin is one of the greatest of artists I have ever met in my life. He has done commissions. He has sold paintings for a quarter of a million dollars. He sold one for a half a million. I remember when he did that. He worked for Collectors Editions and many other companies. This is a one-of-a-kind original. In my Oleg uh, folder, I can show you. Well, I can show it to you right now. I can show you Oleg's that it's Royal, that's Mooka. 
I can show you old leagues that have sold for several hundred thousand dollars. But I'll tell you what, while you're thinking about that, Matt, I want to show you who David Lloyd Glover is. I have some amazing originals by him. I've got some more coins, but I want you to take a look at David Lloyd Glover. What's that? Okay. In my old and cool. So, when you took your last acid trip, did you say to yourself, I'm never doing this again? It got that bizarre. Did you think you were somebody else? No. Okay. Ooh, now they're singing on, oh, never mind. <laughs> All right. Let me know when it's ready, because I have David Loy Glover on tape. He wasn't easy to get on tape. You got to do a lot of... How long ago was your last acid trip? Okay, 1969. All right, that works. I was eight in August of 1969. I think we have it. All right. So anyway, I'll tell you what. Let me let me move this over for a second. Ashley, can you put that David Lloyd Glover up right there? Because I'm gonna move this. Oh, uh, two 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 five. Two 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 five. This is what we're talking about. This is a master painter. David Lloyd Glover has gotten hundreds of thousands of dollars. He is painting a Mercedes Benz, one of the most expensive Mercedes ever, for the Car Museum. I don't know if it was New Hampshire or Vermont, but they're flying them up there. What? Rhode Island, yes. And I want to give you a good idea of who David Lloyd Glover is. What's that? Trying to get that video back. Um, what does Melvin say on the uh, Oleg? All right, I think he fixed it. He's got that look like I just fixed it. I don't know if he just fixed it. Working on it. Take a look at this. This right here is a garden shed. David Lloyd Glover, 2007. What's that? All right, take a look at David Lloyd Glover in his own words. I'm David Lloyd Glover, and art is my life. I've been an artist for the last 40 years. I've made my entire living working in the art field. When people ask me what my style is, I usually describe it as vivid impressionism, and that's because of the color palette that I use. And it's not so much about, am I a landscape painter, a seascape painter, or am I still life painter, representational painter, I paint all things. There is a Glover signature. Collectors tell me there's something they see in my work, regardless of subject matter. 
They recognize my use of vivid colors and there's a real resonance that they feel when they view one of my paintings and particularly when they own one of the paintings. It has real emotional impact to them. When I was about four years old, my father took me to his favorite movie and he took me to see Disney's Fantasia and that was a whole wide world emotional thing that happened to me. You know, being in a big movie theater, the big screen, and seeing this artwork come to life, I was completely knocked off kilter. And my father explained to me that those aren't real things. I thought that, that was a real world. He said, no, those are all drawings. It was that mind-blowing experience that my father took me to that started me on this track of having to create, and I was voracious. I was drawing on everything. So they were getting me big stacks of paper and I was filling them up as fast as I could, drawing everything that I saw on television, like Buck Rogers, Gene Autry, and Roy Rogers. I mean, I was just out of my mind. It started there and it never stopped. I'm always thinking of the person who is going to view the painting and what perspective they're going to have on it, particularly if they're going to be the owner of that painting. It becomes their personal possession and therefore their personal vision. The passion isn't to entertain me. It's not about what I think or what I feel so much. I think about what it would affect somebody else and how I could deeply impact their psyche. I want to bring out human emotions in a way that is calming, serene, exciting, if it's a brilliant sunset or something. It's all about emotions, so that's what paint is. My paintings are really expressions of emotion. The moment that I realized that I was gaining a reputation in art was when my Brentwood Gallery was having an exhibition for me and I walked into a very busy gallery full of people waiting to see me. I noticed that Olivia Newton-John was standing right in front of one of my paintings. I'm new to Los Angeles and I'm going, wow, that's Olivia Newton-John. And we're just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation like I'm an equal to her. We live here in Los Angeles, and it's the entertainment capital of the world, and certainly the creative center of the world. As a result of that, I've created a lot of paintings which celebrate the cultural history of Hollywood with famous icons of American pop culture. did a painting of Django Reinhardt. He was the famous gypsy European jazz guitarist from the 1930s and 1940s. Anybody who plays guitar, that is his hero because there's just nobody else like Django Reinhardt. I finished the painting, I took it in, and the gallery director said to me, dude, that's a great painting, but I don't know who the heck that is. Along comes Kim Campbell, Glenn Campbell's wife. She took one look at this painting and went, oh my God. And she ran back down the street, grabbed Glenn Campbell out of another store, took him up to the gallery and said, Glenn, look at that. And of course, that was it. He fell in love. That is his hero. Glenn Campbell is one of the greatest guitarists in the world ever. His hero is Django Reinhardt. So Glenn Campbell bought the painting. I've had a lot of artists that inspire me. I was at a show of Andrew Wyeth. When you see an Andrew Wyeth original painting, you realize he's really an artist's artist. They're wonderful compositions. His sense of light, of time and place are just outstanding, and it's very inspiring. Another artist is John Sargent. Although he was a portrait painter, great renown, he was also a wonderful impressionist painter who had great facilities to paint just about anything. His ability to capture a place and time was just outstanding. He would pride himself in painting a whole string of pearls with essentially a single brush stroke. I grew up in a city called Victoria in British Columbia. I lived six doors down from Emily Carr, and she is probably one of the greatest impressionist painters that ever lived. And certainly in the realm of women painters, Emily Carr inspired Georgia O'Keeffe. And here I'm literally six doors down from her studio. The impact of seeing her work completely floored me. Her paintings were just unbelievable.
for the way an artist thinks and how an artist approaches his life, I turned to my mentor, Sid Barron, who became over the years what's considered a Canadian national treasure in the world of art and published art. He and I became friends when I was about 18, I think, at the time when I first met Sid. And I went to meet him at a studio and I went down the hallway to that studio door and it's blank, glass window, wrapped on the window, door opens, and this guy who looked like Art Carney from the Honeymooners looked at me and he said, huh, what do you want? And I said, well, I, I, my name is David Glover and I'm an artist and I, I really wanted to meet you and whatever. And he reached out and he grabbed me by the shirt and pulled me inside and said, get in here, and closed the door. And he said, now what was that again? At first he was a little shocked because nobody would ever come to his door. He was a recluse. But shortly thereafter we became fast friends and we became friends for years. And he really was my artistic mentor. He was not an artist who was telling me how to do things technically. It was really about philosophy and it was about life experience. Sid prepared me for the rejection and sharing his life experience on what it's like as an artist to present your portfolio and constantly being rejected. And for me not to lose heart, expect to be rejected is what he would tell me. You make 10 presentations, you make 20 presentations, but eventually somebody will say yes and you'll be accepted. His guidance is what propelled me to pursue my career professionally. <laughs> One of the most poignant moments early in my career was I was invited to Tokyo to have a one-man show with an art dealer there known as Art Brilliant. And Art Brilliant was, certainly at the time, the largest art dealer in the world. I went to an exhibition where it was kind of beyond description. There was over 850 people. The pomp and circumstance they put on, the ceremony of having an artist there live and in person, to them was really something big. At that show, I was sold out that evening. And it was just over 100 original paintings. I realized I had an awful lot of work to do because I signed an exclusive contract for Asia that went on for the next 17 years. Although it was very difficult to perform at such a high level for so many years, the result to me was that there really isn't anything that I can't do. Living in Southern California gives me the inspiration of light and atmosphere, but my broad, vivid landscapes that I create are from my memories of where I grew up in British Columbia. Those images live with you forever. When I want to create a stunning wilderness landscape or a mountainous lake, I go right back to when I was young. My studio is unique in that I have an eastern exposure. So in the morning, I control my lighting through the shutters, and I'm able to direct the light onto the canvas area to essentially color correct, because I can get a very clean color. As the day progresses, I move the shutters because the sun is rising above and then sets into the west. Even when the sun is setting, I get a specific style or type of light that comes in through the windows. When I have one of my paintings sold, I, I never really know whether the same emotions and message that I'm trying to impart in this painting actually transcends to the collector. It's the human part of us that perceives what we see and what we feel as art because we can go to that extra level and there it becomes art. My inspiration will come from some emotional and visual impact, and then I will express it in my paints, in my mediums. I want people to see the remnants of the artist. I want them to see a piece of art. I'm telling a story, either it's a narrative story by what you see going on in the scene, or it's strictly an emotional story. It's a response that you have to a particular light effect, a view down a country road, you imagine what's at the end of that road or where it's leading you to, or it's nostalgic. 
It will remind you of when you were growing up. It will remind you of an important time in your life. Maybe it was your first romance. You were in a setting just like you see in this painting. So it touches this on a very base level. Art is something that chooses you. Your ability to create in any kind of medium just comes innately, and it starts when you're very young. Certainly in my case, it did. You feel this need to create all the time, no matter what you're doing. But it's not something that I think that you decide one day, you wake up and say, okay, let's go to school and be an artist. It has to come from within. Art is something that's always in your left ear telling you, yeah, it's time to paint. It's time to paint, David. You kind of follow the direction that all forces are leading you in. I have done other things in my life, but art is always the mainstay. It has been a constant in my life since I was four years old, and it's a constant today. Everything I do in my life revolves around creativity. Hey, Barry Chapel back with you. I hope everybody's doing great. That was David Lloyd Glover in his own words. My old company, Art and Coin TV, uh, which I own, made that videotape. Folks, look at that. On the, show them what we're looking about at uh, on the easel. That's one of the greatest David Lloyd Glovers. you got a feel of all the people he has worked with work for and Wilson correct me he's in Rhode Island is that where it is he's in Rhode Island painting one of the rarest Mercedes what kind of Mercedes was it I don't know it's like a 4XJ ABAR rotary I have no idea what I just said but he is there painting it there it's a huge commission um, because they want the best. Take a look at this. That, the garden sh shed, is one of the greatest David Lloyd Glover, the certificate of authenticity on the back. This uh, is oil. No, it is uh, acrylic on canvas, painted in 2007. Uh, retail. Uh, about 38,000 is what David said. Um, tell you what I'm going to do on this. I would open on a painting like this at 1,500. And actually, let's show them some more David Lloyd Glovers so they get an idea of what we're talking about. Yeah, 1500 on this. Yeah. Yeah. One eight eight nine. Did you ever golf much? I gave golf up, Ashley. Did you? Yes. Because I only play the real kind now. Miniature. Miniature. Yeah. yeah. You, you're good at miniature? Yeah, really? Um, yeah, okay, I might give you a, a chance to prove yourself. Look at this next one. Folks, these are all thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar David Lloyd Glovers. That's what they go for in galleries. He even told us some of the galleries he's in. I am not going to charge anywhere near that. Just remember the item numbers when you see it, like this one, 1938. No, the old gets sold.
and I am down to only one set, the last set of the 1914 D and S, and I thank everybody that has been buying tonight. This is the last set at 4,990. Uh, I have one set, I'll get to that in a second. Right there, take a look at this. How can you paint any better than that? You could be at that place with a canvas, this painting. Look at those skies. To quote Tom Cruise, look at those Monet vanilla skies. You never saw him in that movie. That was a good Tom Cruise movie. It was great, but was the one where he was frozen? Yes. And then he woke. Uh, they woke him up. Uh, anyway, uh, are you leaving, Kiki? I, I am so glad you bought a new pair of pants. <laughs> the, those have no rips in them. You shouldn't have showed me that. You were doing, you were batting a thousand to that. Hand me the next painting, Ashley. I got a price that you're not going to believe. Texas skies. What? Two zero five nine. You're talking about forty and fifty thousand dollar David Lloyd Glover, one of the best sellers for Art Brilliance, one of the best sellers in gallery form. He is an amazing artist. Those retails are what you pay at a gallery, and a lot of galleries have his show, has him in their Gallery, Ashley, the net. Oh, look at those! What kind of what kind of flowers are those? Aren't those bluebells? Yes. Texas bluebells. You sure those aren't Louisiana bluebells? What? <laughs> what? What do you say? I said all my exes live in Texas. All your exes live in Texas. Uh. I have an ex that lives in Texas, hey. just a girlfriend. Well, what, what she broke up with me because I could not quit smoking. Oh, okay. It was pre oh. it was pre nicotine gum. Water spout. What is this? The water spout. Water spout. Is that the name of it? No. It's called Plusty Day Pacific Ocean. It's a blusty day, Pooh Bear. Blustery. Blustery day. Now, Ashley, that is stunning. Good camera work, Wilson. Oh, look at that. That is stunning. Now, Ashley, this next one. That next one right there will sell. They all will, but Laguna Shores. Laguna Shores, 1942? Yes. 1942. Wow, there it is. That is amazing. Look at that. Look at those skies. This is uh, one of the greatest artists I've had on the show. Stunning. All right. Let's show one more painting, Ashley. 
And then I'm going to start taking some requests. Memories of West Texas. 2060. 2060. You know, my first business was Chapel Enterprises. I used to drill wells, oil wells, shallow oil wells in Corsicana, Texas. Wilson, not that you would know this, do you know what you call a shallow oil well in Corsicana, Texas? A stripper well. I found my best whales in the Tawakini Formation at 480 feet. What's that? Morgan Dollars? No, I'm going to bring I, I don't. I'll get him one, but I don't have it right now. Just have shown you a lot of David Lloyd Glovers, and here's what I am going to do. Call me. Uh, oh, I got to show that one. Look at that pink. Look at the pink on this next one. Vanilla Skies. Is that the name? That was a good movie. You saw Vanilla Skies? Two zero five six. I don't want to seem too critical, but Vanilla Skies, I felt, was better than Strawberry Skies. Didn't like Chocolate Skies. Folks, I'll tell you what, you are looking at $40,000 David Lloyd Glovers. I'm going to work you a deal. Ashley has set them up behind me. One more. Oh, look at that. Uh, have you ever seen the movie Pulp Fiction? All right, when they open the case up, but they don't show you what's in that case, it glows like that. Wilson knows what it was. Yeah, you can tell him, Wilson. One nine three nine. No, no, no. This is one nine three nine. All right. Now, folks. Look at that. Look at those skies. Where is this? this is Camarillo. Yep. Camarillo wildflowers. Folks, that is one of the greatest glovers I've ever seen. Camera two. Behind me, I have the glovers set up. These are usually 3,500, 4,000 to open, not tonight. You're going to get some deals of a lifetime tonight. We are in September. When do they tie and change the time? Yeah, it's still in October. So, it's light out. People have been trapped inside all the time. A lot of people might not be watching. Take a look. Pick your Glover. I will amaze you at the price I will sell you a David Lloyd Glover.
We're not talking, I know they sell for forty and fifty thousand. We're not talking anywhere near that. We're not talking ten grand, five grand, four grand, three grand. Just give me a call. I am gonna make you a deal of a lifetime on David Lloyd Glover's work. That one right there, that water spout, or the one right next to it. Oh, that one, yeah. Ashley? Yes. I'm going to see if anybody's watching. That one, yeah, the middle and the wall. Put the easel back up. I got a price. I, it's so cheap, I got to write it down. Uh, do you have a pen? Yes. Yeah. Do you have a pen and paper? And I am not even going to say this price out loud, Ashley, and I recommend... You don't either, because there are people in the art world that might eliminate you over this price. You know what I'm talking about, Wilson? You've met a few of those people. She doesn't have a pen and paper. All right. This is one of the greatest glovers I have ever seen. You only get one piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, this pin don't write, so now it does. It's just hard to write on. No, this works. Ashley, camera two. I cannot show you this price on TV. If you remotely like this world-class painting by David Lloyd Glover, call in. I'm going to hand Ashley the price. I can't even say it. You might get in trouble if you say it out loud. They got a call. Is that cheap or what? Yeah. If they call, Call if you are interested in this painting. I just priced this so cheap. What time three nine? This is going to sell that fast, Patty. That's that's usually forty five hundred. Look at that, that is a perfect painting. That's an original. It's worth it. That is one of the greatest. And I'll pay for shipping. I'll pay. Which is the same thing. Is that sold? All right. Now. I. Oh, this. Look at this. Memories of West Texas. That the last one sold. Item number is two o six o. Look at that. Memories 
of West Texas. All right, what I want to do is, Ashley, you had the system right till I messed it up. Let's put the other one, those two over here and let people pick. And oh, and be, while you're doing that, Wilson, right over here, we started with five sets. I am down to the last 1914 Denver. Ooh, look how bold that D is on that one. 1914 D, $20 St. God, and an MS62, and a 1914 S in MS62. We had five sets. We now only have one left. $4,990. As inflation picks up, it's already up. They just don't tell you the real number. In my humble opinion, it's only my opinion, this is the type of coins you want to own. The 14D, 253 or 257,000 is all they minted. Very low minage. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. Four, I think it's, uh, what did I do with my coin world book? I see it. I got a duck under the camera. Hey, I'm like the flash, watch this, I'm back. Was that, no, I haven't even, I moved so slow, Wilson, I'm getting old. I'm an old man, Wilson. Uh, right. I will get you the exact managers because I made one mistake. Well, I've made more than one mistake, but here we go. Twenty dollars St. Gaudens. Nineteen fourteen. Four hundred and fifty-three thousand. One of the lowest managers. I mean that is low on the 14D, 14S 1.498, so almost 1.5 million, but the 14D only 453,000 were ever minted. Last set I have, 4,990. Coins like this, we haven't really felt the inflation that's in the system yet. People think they have, but when it really starts picking up, and it will, coins like this will go up real fast and real far. That's just my opinion. Been doing it for 32 years now. That makes me really old. So give that, I'm down to the last set. And I have sold every, we had five or six sets. We're down to the last one. You're looking at it. Yeah. Last set. All right, now. Nobody wants an MS66 coin or an MS64 $20 St. Gaudens. Wilson, show them. You keep thinking I'm going to back off the set. Exit stage left, Barry. Show them the David Lloyd Glovers that are up right now. This is one of the artists you want to own. 
we have a grand total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. David Lloyd Glover's here. I got a Peter Max. Tell me which one you want. Keep going, Wilson. That's one of the best right there. Those skies are hauntingly beautiful. That one right there, I can't believe, is left. That is an original acrylic on board, painted by David Lloyd Glover. Yes, I have some Alphonse Mucas. I have a turn of the century bicycle poster. Okay. Folks, I also brought my secret stash we had sold out last week of every 2016 nine 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 four nine fine we'll go back to this shot right here uh canadian maple leaf we had we sold out of every single one i brought this box right here full there are 875 coins Mike Mahoney I watched a long presentation at goldsilver.com today showing he was showing why it's only a matter of time silver is going to be at least a hundred dollars an ounce and I used every metric to show you some cases it was going to be five and twelve hundred dollars an ounce you can get a Canadian four nine fine with the privy mark a little maple leaf underneath the maple leaf and what did I price these at way cheap what did I price these at $27.95. I hope you're out there. If you want to buy a roll of 25, I got a little bit of room, not much. If you have some kids, please think about buying one at $27.95 and give it to your daughter, your son. It makes all the difference. A guy that is no longer with us, a guy named Joe May, gave me a Brazilian 2000 Real Reales coin when I was eight. And I never stopped asking my dad, why aren't we on the gold system? Why are we not on the silver standard? How can the gold to silver ratio today be so one-sided? It's like 95 to 1, 95 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. Cheapest silver's been compared to gold in a long time. And when you can get one, I kid you not, give your daughter, give your son, your grandkids, give them a silver, pure silver, in this case, 4-9 pure silver coin. They will go crazy. They will be looking at it, thinking about it, and that's what real wealth is. Something amazing happens when you put a real silver coin in somebody's hand, a real gold coin. It gives people an appreciation of what money is, and that is real money right there. 
So give me a call on that. Give me a call. on any of the David Loy Glovers. Hey. Get it ready, Ashley. Can you put the easel back up? I'm going to show people, in his own words, who Michael Schofield is. Uh, all of his friends are disowning him because he won't get the heart operation. All right. Camera two for a second. Yeah. Hi, Barry Chapel here. I want to show you just a nine or ten minute film I made on Michael Schofield. Take a look at this. I'm Michael Schofield. I'm a, uh, an impressionist landscape artist. Landscapes are probably what I enjoy doing the most. And I think one of the reasons I enjoy doing what I do is because I enjoy being in nature. Landscapes to me speaks to, uh, speaks to who and what I am. I enjoy the outside. I love looking at different parts of the country. Every different part of the country is, is unique in its area. Landscapes are, are what I enjoy painting more than anything else. When I'm looking at a landscape, the first thing I do is to see the depth of the piece and how I'm going to create the depth. How am I going to create the foreground and the middle ground and the, and the background? And what it is that I'm going to have to do in order to jump over the hurdles it's going to take in order to get that particular scene on, on canvas. Do I frame it right to left? Do I move these trees here? Do I do I bring a brook through the center of the piece? Do I bring it from left to right? You know, what's intriguing about this particular scene? Taking out all of the small details that don't make any sense and just getting the essence of the piece, that's what I do. That's what I envision when I first see the, the landscape. I think an artist's job is to interpret what the creator has laid out for us. We're just basically taking snapshots of that, interpret, putting in our own interpretation of it, our own feelings, our own emotion, and then presenting that to the viewers or to the public. That's art to me. So it really is just a, it's a statement of, of what we are and who we are, and it's translated through, in my case, landscapes. The idea of becoming an artist um, didn't really hit until high school. And it was one of those rainy days when the music instructor was filling in for the English teacher that couldn't make it to, to school. So he, um, he whipped out his watercolor um, palette and, and paints and a piece of watercolor paper and did a demonstration um, right in the class. And that was his way of filling in for, for the teacher. And well, I watched him do that, and I, I still remember what he painted. He painted an old railroad ties and some water in between the ties, and a couple of trees above it and reflecting in the waters. And I thought, wow, that's, I really, that's what I want to do. Your life changes quickly, you know, and, your, and the direction changes quickly. Um, and then I think a lot of it is just following the path. 
uh, we don't choose our career, it chooses us. I think that's very true. Uh, I think as long as you keep moving, that, that career will catch up to you or you'll, you'll find the right, the right spot to walk into or the right, the right uh, position to be in at the right time. You know, the doors open, you walk through them, see, what, see what's on the other side. I did a couple of one-man shows down in Florida. I think probably one of the more interesting one was one I did in Cleveland, a real, real wet, cold, snowy night. I really didn't think that I would have anybody show up for the show because it was so cold and miserable. We ended up having 1,100 people show up for the for the uh, for the event. We sold almost everything in the in the uh, the entire show, and the party didn't stop until about one, two o'clock in the morning. And uh, those were fun. We had a lot of people show up in those, in those particular, in those days. All throughout Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia. I did that for probably 10 years. There was a lot of shows. The most posters I think I had in one particular catalog was um, about 25. Back in the 90s, I think there was, there was a few catalog companies that had uh, 10 or 15, but I think um, Editions Limited had uh, up to about 25 pieces. Interestingly enough, some of the pieces are still in catalogs dating back into the, into the early 90s. And then you start to realize that you know, all the millions of posters you're, you're selling happen to find their way in front of the public. And, I think that's when you start to realize that uh, you're actually fairly famous in this, in this game. Well, I spent 10 years in, in Nashville, in that area. And I think a lot of the subject matter that I, that I paint today comes out of that era and out of that area. Um, Tennessee and Kentucky and Alabama, Mississippi, and even upstate New York. I love that area up there. You know, big pines, the big beech trees, the big birches. I think a lot of that uh, that I do today is reminiscent of those areas and of that subject matter. I paint in California quite a bit too, um, like, like today. Um, those, those areas I think are what I enjoy painting the most. One of the more difficult things is painting on location. A lot of people say, well, you got everything right in front of you. Well, you have too much in front of you. The artist has to take all of the elements, eliminate the things you don't need in the painting, and just paint the things that you do need. And you have to deal with the light changing. It changes rapidly. You're painting the shadows on one tree, and all of a sudden, they're not there anymore. So you have to take a mental snapshot of the area that you're looking at, and then paint that, because it's going to change five minutes from now. I think my paintings, they tell hope, and they tell adventure, and mystery, and romance, and I've been fortunate, really fortunate, to paint something that people really enjoy and, and feel and get uh, inspired from and fall in love with. And I like the growing aspect of becoming a better and better artist. Uh, I don't think you ever arrive as an artist. I think you're always arriving. You're eventually going to get there. I think eventually um, I'll, I'll get to a point where I feel comfortable with the work. I don't think I'll ever be satisfied completely with it.
I like the idea that somebody can see one of my paintings and see a part of nature that they've been in, a place that they, they're familiar with, a scene that they know from, from childhood or some, some time in a vacation, something like that. That's when I feel like what I do actually rings home. That's important to me. They can actually relate to the landscape. So um, communication between the painter and the, the viewer is what's important. Hi folks, that was a video I made on Michael Schofield a long time ago. Michael Schofield is now 74 years old. He uh, is an amazing artist. He is in <coughs> the Arm and Hammer billion dollar collection. He has sold paintings for Hubs Historical. Um, he has uh, did a commission three paintings, three abstract paintings for 180,000. Take a look at this right there. This is one of the most beautiful Michael Schofield oil on canvas. Pan that piece, Wilson. 2214. I only have three landscapes and then I got some abstract Schofields. That is second to none. Try and get a Michael Schofield oil on canvas, 30 by 40, 2,500 to open. $200 increments once we get the open. That is a perfect Schofield. Look at that. That is what one of the greatest artists, you know, he used to be a professional a uh, sports artist, he was a PGA golf artist. Look at that, that is perfect. That's a $25,000, $35,000 Schofield. $2,500 to open would, have, would be a steal. Ashley, I wanna show, cause I only have three of these. Can you, uh, here I can. Uh, yeah, let's put this one on the easel. Two two one five. Right there. Take a look at that. Perfect Schofield. Twenty five thousand. This is twenty five hundred to open. Look at the reflections. Perfect. Now, Ashley, I have a seascape by Michael. Can you hand that to me? Oh, they're stunning. And that's all the Michael. Ah, we can just set them right here. Two, two, one, two. Two, two, one, two. Look at that photo. Well, hang on, don't put it there nope. just yet. So they can see this Michael Schofield seascape. $25,000 retail, 2,500 to open. What's the name of that piece? 
Rapid Waters. When I was a little kid, I had trouble with my R's. Did you? Yes. They would have made me go to a special class in the third grade and say, Rapid Rainfall Radio. But now I can say Wapid real fast. That is some Wapid waters there. All right, folks. He's 74 years old. His friends are threatening to disown him because he was supposed to go in for a heart operation, open heart operation. He won't do it. They think he is going to kick because he doesn't. I don't know. Even though I did spend one night in the Holiday Inn Express, I do not feel capable of giving medical advice to anyone, including myself. So, any of these three were 2,500 to open, call me, work me some deals. These are the only three landscape Schofields I have. I have some of his abstract work, but I wanted to show the three landscapes, well, two landscapes and one seascape that I have. That one right there, you're coming to it, Wilson. That I am absolutely amazed. That is one of the most vivid Michael Schofields I have ever seen. It is hauntingly beautiful. And the idea you could get that for 2500 oh. Just give me a call. I'll work some deals with you. They're calling for this one right here is my guess. No. I was wrong. All right. Well, folks, Michael Schofield is a great artist. And the prices you guys are getting originals for, just get close to what I'm asking and I can sell it to you. I have some David Lloyd Glovers. But one thing, camera two, I want to stress and I really want to stress I'll state my reputation on it. It's going to get hairy here, not at the studio. I'm just talking about the economy. The more gold and silver and platinum and palladium and rhodium you can get your hands on, the better off you're going to be. Take a look at this. I got one ounce silver maple leaves. So cheap, they're unbelievable. Good shot, Wilson. I'll move the Diet Mountain Dew. Look at that. Yeah, I got $20 St. Gaudens and 6.4 and 6.6. I got one ounce, four nine fine silver maple leaves. My last 300, uh, 875 coins. I mean, I am talking unbelievable deals. Protect yourself. I personally believe when it takes, when it starts moving, it's going to be something for the ages. 
and folks that have silver coins, gold coins, you're going to be just fine. Now, I am down. I also have one 1914D and one 1914S set left at 4,990. But look at those four nine fine Canadian silver maple leaves with a maple leaf privy mark. A very special year when they put that privy mark on there. They put that there as an extra anti-counterfeiting mark. So, and look at these coins on the top, Whoa, Wilson. Look at that. 1927 and 64, 1927 in MS66, unheard of. Call me. I want to thank everybody for watching. I got the David Lloyd Glovers. I can feel it. Someone's going to buy a roll of 25 maple leaves here. Tell you what, on the seascape by Michael Schofield, I'm going to have a price so cheap it could get Ashley in some serious trouble. Call me. Whether it's a David Lloyd Glover or a $20 Saint, look at this MS66. Wilson, let me find the MS. Six four six four. Is this the six six? Yeah. Look at that, folks. Gem brilliant uncirculated. Superb gem brilliant uncirculated. Oh, look at that. That's wealth. That's real wealth. You can't print that. I was looking at a chart of money and how much they've printed. It's staggering. Silver and gold will protect you from that. It's going to get bad. That's my guess. And those silver maple leaves? At $27.95 with a special privy mark on it? If you want to buy a roll, I got a special, special price. If you want to roll a 25, call me. I'm running out of time. Ashley, I'm curious how bad I have, how many people have left me from the show. Start at zero on this seascape right here. Oh, hang on. Well, yeah, let's, which one are they interested in, Patty? So folks, here's what I'm going to do. Right here, two, two, one, two. $25,000 Michael Schofield painted in 22. Wow, two, two, one, two, painted in two, two, oh, two, two, oh, two, two. Start at zero, $200 increments. I'm curious who's watching me. That's an amazing Michael Schofield. Give me a call. Yes, I have the Jang bronze. I have a Peter Max. I got David Lloyd Glover. Patty, do you got this? You know, Kiki's left. Who's got the open on this? 
So we have 200 bid. Wow. Selling rough seas for $200 right now. That's oil on canvas. 200 looking for four. Four hundred. Six hundred. Six hundred. The one bidder at six hundred. Oh, they want eight. All right, we have eight hundred. Eight hundred. All right, they're out. 800, one bidder. Someone is going to get Oil on Canvas by legendary artist Michael Schofield. We're at 800. This is insane. 800 dollars going once. It must be me, Wilson. Eight hundred dollars going twice. Hang on. I am going to be who's the guy that made the movie The Jerk? Steve Martin? I'm going to be like Steve Martin here, Wilson. All I need is my Schofield. I know we got a bidder at 800 and my MS66 Saint. That's all I need. I'm finished, Wilson. It's over. 32 years. I'm lucky I got it, Ashley. That's a beautiful Schofield right there. Hand me that too for a second. Because all I need is my MS66 coin, my other Schofield, and my silver, and I can leave. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hang on. Yes. And my silver. That's all I need. <laughs> I'm a happy camper. I can't believe. Oh, now you're trying to take it. <laughs> $800 going once. Here, can I hand you this? It all started when I was a small child, Wilson. $800 on that Michael Schofield going twice. Your dog is pretty. It has a rough seas ahead. That could be an omen for you, Wilson. <laughs> you know, it's for me. Oh, that's a delay, B. I see. Damn, I'm ugly. I didn't think I could feel any worse. I, I didn't feel bad enough. I just saw what I just did. Oh. <laughs> $800. Going once, $800, going twice, fair and final warning, all in, all said, you got a thousand, okay, thank you, we're at a thousand. Twelve hundred has been bid. Thank you and thank you. Twelve hundred dollars. Uh oh, I only got four minutes left. Going once. Going twice. Fair final warning. I gotta move. Sold. 
I am out of time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I only have a little bit of time left. Take a look at this. Whether you need silver. Now, once again, those are 495. That is a 2016 special anti counterfeiting privy mark. You should see what other people are selling them for. I mean, that is a good deal at $27.95. You want to buy a roll of 25, I'll lower the price even more. If you want to buy the last set, I only have one set of 1914 DNS left. We had five. I am down to the last set. I'll just put it right here. No, that's not going to work. I'll move these. $4,990. That is real money, real wealth. I think in the next year and a half, two years, people are going to learn the difference. A lot of stuff that people think is real ain't what they think it is. Those are PCGS graded $4,990. $27.95 on the American, on the Canadian Silver Liberty, uh, at least with special privy mark. Look at this. Folks, 1927, I have a 6.4 and a 6.6. Call me. I hope you're out there. I still have the Jang uh, bronze. I'll work you a deal. I have all these David Lloyd Glovers. Call me. I am on live streaming for a few more minutes. Camera two, if you've been watching me on Dish, I thank you. I'll be back next Wednesday night. My name is Barry Chappell. I got two minutes before we lose Dish. So keep watching. I'm going to stay on live streaming. I'm going to call it live screaming uh, for a little bit, bit after the show. But darn it, if you don't own any gold and silver, get some. If you don't buy it from me, buy it from somebody. It's going to get strange out there. And those of you that do buy it, those of you that already own it, you're going to be very, very happy you did. And the other four people or five people that bought the 14 S and D, my hat's off to you. That is going to go gaboom in a good way straight up. I only have one set left at 4,990. If you want a roll of 25 Canadian maple leaves, I'll slash a few bucks off, make it happen. I got one minute left. Now, camera two, I want to thank you. Buford, this is your last warning. Do not kick that dog, Buford. If we even hear that you hurt that dog, Wilson, you're gonna do you're gonna get mad, aren't you? Wilson. And we're talking Wilson, the guy that used to get strung out on acid is going to come over and get you. Patty, would you want a strung out acid guy chasing you? No. no, she wouldn't. So Buford, don't touch that dog. You'd be nice to that dog, Buford. Yeah, Juliet's got a really nice dog. He's sleeping. Call me on anything. I got 10 seconds. We love you. We ship fast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll be back next Wednesday. Goodbye, Dish. Now, for everybody on live streaming, I'm still here. Call me. I'm going to stay on for just a few minutes. I will work you deals on live streaming. Patty, the next couple people that buy anything, no shipping. If they call on live streaming, 
I'm going to ship it for free. Just call me. Yeah. Poof. Like the magic dragon. It's just gone. I hear somebody texting. That better not be Buford. Oh, they're calling me at a great time. MS64. Tell them those are handpicked by me. I went through thousands at every Long Beach show to get these, and I will ship it for free. What are you eating there? I just have a snack bag that I'm not supposed to be eating, but. And you got Reese's peanut butter cups. But I'll tell you where I drive extra far to get. White chocolate Reese's peanut butter. Oh. I bought the store out of, they only had five left, I took them. Oh. Yeah, I had to give one of them to Ginger. Did you give her chocolate? No. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I gave her most of the pizza. She loves pizza. Yeah. No, I don't give a dog white chocolate. I give him black chocolate. No, I don't give a dog <laughs> chocolate at all. What do they say? Can they do it on the 1927? Okay. What? He's type typing. He's type type typing? Did you have to take typing in high school, Wilson? I did. I, did, yeah. I hated that course. I loved it. Yeah, that's because you're good at it. All right. Look at that 6-6. Six, six. The last one I got right there. Oh, shut up. You took typing in elementary school? Yeah. Oh, man. We had the... He says what? She's young. People like Wilson and myself, we're on our last legs. I don't buy yellow bananas anymore. Green bananas. Yeah. I buy yellow ones. I don't wait. I. Uh, what does he say? Any takers on that? Hey, uh, um, Ashley, what's the best price I can do on a roll of 25? Folks, I'm not going to say it on the air. Camera two, nobody. Camera two, I have a special, special price on a roll of 25 Canadian 495 2016 with, pri excuse me, with privy mark. Call Ashley. I got quite a few rolls. I got a really good price. On the 1927, I got a great price. Just call me. I'm running out of time. I'm on the internet only, so I actually don't have any time limit. 
Well, Matt's going, yeah, you do, dude. We got people that work here. Yeah. Better watch out, Barry. You're going to end up in the dungeon like Wilson. But it's cooler in the dungeon. You've been getting free air conditioning, Wilson. Well, folks, I got to exit stage left. Uh, any interest? What did they say? What does he say on the 1927? No. Tell you what. He says what? All right, folks. Uh, well. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, hang on. I hear a possible inquiry. Okay. Nobody else on any of the silver? All right. Well, I want to thank you. For letting me come in your uh, internet space. <laughs> That's what you got to do. You got to thank people. I don't want to be invading anybody's internet space. But anyway, folks, thank you. Any last calls, concerns, comments? Thank you. I will be back next Wednesday. Still have plenty of David Lloyd Glovers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Talk to you later. You guys have a great one. See you later. Bye-bye.